Hello, my name is Kenzie and I'm with EPCOR's Operations Department at the Gold Bar Wastewater Treatment Plant. I'm going to take you for a tour of the plant where I'll be walking you through different processes involved in the treatment of wastewater. Every time you flush the toilet, take a shower, or pull the sink plug, you send wastewater down the drain to an underground network of pipes that conveys the wastewater to the Gold Bar Wastewater Treatment Plant. The plant's job is to remove contaminants from the wastewater before safely returning it to the North Saskatchewan River serving over 900,000 people across the Greater Edmonton region. The plant consistently meets stringent provincial and federal treatment standards while treating upwards of 100 billion litres of wastewater annually. The government regulations we follow are part of our approval to operate. The approval lists the acceptable limits of solids, ammonia, phosphorus and bacteria we can release back into the river so that it can maintain a healthy ecosystem. The function of the wastewater treatment plant is to minimize the amount of these contaminants in the treated wastewater. Each part of the process plays an important role and we work 24-7 to ensure that the plant is operating optimally. The wastewater is collected from across Edmonton and transferred to the Goldbar plant by over 3,000 kilometers of underground sewer pipe. The majority of this piping is dedicated to sanitary sewer flow. However, roughly 25% is combined sewer. The combined sewer is mostly found in Edmonton's older districts and it collects both sanitary and stormwater into the same piping. This is important because when it rains or when the snow melts, the plant has to treat the excess flow. The flow into the plant during these wet weather events can be up to four or five times higher than normal flows. The first step in the wastewater treatment process is to remove large debris and inorganic solids. This includes things like rocks, silt, rags, and garbage. The raw wastewater first enters the grit chambers where air is bubbled up through the wastewater, which helps separate the debris from the organic matter. The heavier material called grit drops to the bottom of the tank and is conveyed into bins. The lighter organic particles and floatable materials remain in suspension. After a few vigorous minutes, the flow exits the grit tanks through mechanical bar screens, which trap and remove floating debris like plastics, rags, and wood. These screenings, along with the grit removed earlier, are hauled to the landfill. The pre-treatment stage protects downstream plant equipment and allows the treatment processes to focus on removing organic solids and contaminants. The next step in the treatment process is called primary treatment, and the purpose is to remove organic solids. This is done using primary clarifiers. They slow down the flow and use gravity to settle out suspended organic material. As the solids settle and collect at the bottom of the tank, a rake mechanism pulls the sludge across the floor to a collection point where it's pumped out for solids treatment. The rake mechanism then travels along the surface of the water to collect scum. Scum includes floating material such as oil and grease. The sludge and the scum will undergo extensive treatment lasting several weeks. This partially treated wastewater is called primary effluent and approximately 75% of the organic solids have been removed, but it still contains ammonia, phosphorus, and bacteria that needs to be removed. During wet weather periods, the combined sewers often capture more runoff than they can handle, resulting in wastewater overflows to the river. Without such overflows, there would be no way of preventing untreated wastewater from backing up into household basements. However, with continuous improvements at Gold Bar, the amount of untreated overflow that enters the river is being greatly diminished. The overflows are directed to the enhanced primary treatment clarifiers, which are similar to the primary clarifiers we just saw, except they use chemicals to speed up the settling process. The next step is secondary treatment, and the purpose is to remove ammonia, phosphorus, and the remaining organic solids. The wastewater flows from the primary clarifiers into the bioreactors, and the wastewater's microorganism population helps to remove these contaminants. The process is referred to as biological nutrient removal. There are specialized zones within each of the 11 bioreactors, and each zone has a different role to play in removing these contaminants. Some microorganisms are conditioned to absorb phosphorus with the help of volatile fatty acids, and some are conditioned to convert ammonia into nitrogen gas. The different zones in the bioreactor allow these specific microorganisms to flourish and continue to grow and multiply so that they can treat the wastewater. It's important to remove phosphorus because it can act as a fertilizer in the river, enhancing the growth of vegetation, which ends up depleting the oxygen in the river. Ammonia also needs to be removed because it's harmful to various aquatic species. Following several hours circulating within the bioreactors, the wastewater is sent to the secondary clarifiers. The well-fed microorganisms form tiny clumps, or flock, which settles to the bottom of the clarifier, and we're left with a clear liquid. This is the same settling process we saw in the primary clarifiers. 
The settled sludge is eventually sent for solids treatment and the clear liquid is sent for UV disinfection. Now that we have removed solids, ammonia, and phosphorus, we need to remove the bacteria. The clear wastewater effluent from the secondary clarifiers is disinfected by high-intensity ultraviolet light. In only a few short minutes, this chemical-free process renders the treated wastewater safe for contact through recreational activities such as boating, wading, and fishing. The treated wastewater effluent is discharged through the outfall after almost 18 hours of treatment at the plant. About 5% of the treated effluent from the secondary clarifiers is diverted for another process. We have a membrane filtration facility on site that recycles the wastewater into high-grade process water for industry users. Less water needs to be drawn out of the river this way. Here's how it works. Membrane filters contain millions of microscopic pore openings that allow the water to pass through, but act as a barrier to even the smallest bacteria. The pores are 0.04 microns in diameter. In comparison, a human hair is about 10 microns in diameter. This reclaimed water project started in 2005 and received several engineering and environmental awards. Now that we've followed the liquid wastewater through the treatment process, let's jump back to the solids treatment. The sludge that was collected at the bottom of the primary clarifier tanks is sent to the fermenters, four unheated vessels with a circulating mechanical rake. Their main purpose is to produce volatile fatty acids. These volatile fatty acids are concentrated in the fermenter liquid and are sent to the bioreactor we described earlier to help remove phosphorus. After three to seven days in the fermenter, the sludge is thickened and sent to one of our eight digesters. Oxygen-free digesters, which are maintained at 37 degrees Celsius, break down and stabilize the massive amounts of organic sludge removed during the primary and secondary treatment processes, approximately 100,000 kilograms per day. As the solids are broken down, they produce biogas. The biogas contains about 65% methane, and it's captured and converted into renewable natural gas. After 15 to 20 days in the digesters, the digested sludge is pumped to off-site storage ponds called lagoons for further thickening, processing, and distribution. As the solids and liquids separate, the liquid, called supernatant, is pumped to the Austera Nutrient Recovery Facility to be converted into fertilizer. The thickened sludge, referred to as biosolids, is distributed to fields around Edmonton as fertilizer through the Nutrigold program. In order to maintain this complex system, we collect samples at various points in the process to ensure that the parameters we want to control are within specified limits. Of most importance is the sampling of effluent, the end of the wastewater treatment process, since it is a legal requirement under the plant's approval to operate. These samples are collected daily and are analyzed by the plant's laboratory. The operators and lab staff work together to collect samples at various points in the process. For a large plant like Goldbar, situated near residential areas and surrounded by recreational parks, order control is a necessity. Four wet scrubbing towers equipped with large exhaust fans collect and treat foul air from the plant zones known to produce odor. These areas are covered with aluminum lids to prevent foul air from escaping. Scrubber fans draw the foul air out from the covers and up through the scrubbing towers. Traveling upwards through plastic media, the foul air is sprayed above with a solution of bleach and caustic soda. Hydrogen sulfide and other offending odor constituents are scrubbed from the air and the clean air is released through the scrubber stack. The spent chemical solution is sent to the tanks for treatment. We strive to limit the amount of odors entering the surrounding neighborhoods by continually improving the odor control system, upgrading equipment, and adding new technologies to optimize the process. Thank you for joining us on our tour. We take a lot of pride in our plant and the work that we do to help protect the environment. 